what's up guys this is going to be a video about several different things i want you to get my six back here watch behind me this is where we may or may not have actually captured the mysterious entity on camera in 1080p high definition nonetheless just a couple days ago i'm uploading this one in 360 i'm telling you now brah if you're here for more 1080 don't waste your time because it's late in the day my my internet connection is terrible and it, it takes me hours to upload in 1080 even though that video was only nine minutes and two seconds long so uh so just watch you know first thing we're going to do this, this is going to be another unboxing you guys have got to stop sending me stuff <clears throat> this is actually for my son aunt rosie thank you so much uh daniel's in the philippines right now with his mom so even though this totally awesome remote control truck is for him guess who's going to be using it for the next couple of months while he's gone this guy because guess who has not outgrown big boy toys okay and aunt rosie so you'll know we got the worm castings we got the plant food i did dig up those tomato plants as you instructed replanted them by mixing that stuff together and your weed eater, the electric weed eater that I got, that I put showcased in a video a couple uh, weeks ago, now that I actually know how to use it, I'm using that thing for hours a day. I'm not gonna touch my two-stroke gas-powered weed eater anymore. Guys, I'm gonna make a video here in the next over the next few days about this amazing little electric weed eater. It's affordable, it's lightweight, and it will cut two and three feet high grass like nobody's business clean for the environment the battery will last a good hour before it goes out charges up in another hour gives you time to go split some wood do something else get back to it mind blown but now listen you guys have got to stop sending me gifts okay and just so you'll know something i've i've wanted for a while is a convertible mercedes benz just putting that out there okay now that we've done the unboxing i'm going to take the phone and we're going mobile with my mobile phone Cause we're gonna see if we can capture some movement behind. That's my rooster. Oh, stories I got to tell you. Some stuff's been starting to happen all over again. But look, that that rooster's name <clears throat> used to be. He's had so many names. It started out as uh, I don't know. It had a girl's name because we thought it was a hen at first. But look at the beautiful job my zero turn does and what was three hours worth of mowing is now about an hour and 15 minutes okay so then we changed his name to backup because he kept getting the crap kicked out of him by dean the rooster the alpha male so then we separated him once we realized oh it's not a hen well he kept going out free range and then he went over and he challenged dean and he whipped dean's tail feathers so he was no longer the beta and Dean was no longer the alpha. And, you know, thought about it. What was going on is Dean stayed in the cage, just kind of like sitting around being fat and happy. Backup was out here free ranging, exercising, eating grass, eating bugs. Uh, he became the alpha because he just he became active. So we changed his name to uh, first string QB. First, he's no longer backup. He's the starter. So his name's first string QB or, or just first string. We're going to call him first string for short at least until we change his name again. Now, on with the story. I actually have a story for you. And I don't know, up here's where we saw, this is a whole nother story. This thing that's coming back around happens every spring when I believe potentially the Bigfoot Sasquatch that may or may not live in the woods behind my house is off in their mating grounds. And I know where those mating grounds are and last year, it appeared as if we may or may not have been being har harassed and tormented by a dog man. I actually had to go to the potential Bigfoot Sasquatch mating grounds and humbly ask them to return to our property to protect us from these things. And what, what I think we have going on up here now isn't a dog man. Potentially, it may be a Wendigo. And I'm going to tell you, tell, tell you the story behind that will be told soon. It has inspired the beginning of Bigfoot Sasquatch Files Volume 11. Just when you thought. Bigfoot Sasquatch Files Volume 10. Now available in print and Kindle. Description box below has a link on Amazon. And Volumes 1 through 9. Just when you thought there wasn't going to be any more 
Bigfoot Sasquatch Files uh, volumes because 10 is a nice round number. It's a good place to stop. But what you find is, no, that's just the start because number 11 is underway and it has to do with what I believe may or may not be back here. That's going to be sending me back to the potential Bigfoot Sasquatch mating grounds because I don't want this thing back here. I think it's a Wendigo. More on that later. All right, so this video, now that I'm five and a half minutes into it, I'm gonna actually start with the story I came here to tell. I had to thank Aunt Rosie, had to tell you guys, stop showering me with gifts, but I have wanted a convertible Mercedes-Benz for a long time. Just saying. Okay, don't get my six. I can't look into the camera. You know, you know how I roll. So I'm gonna talk and tell you the story. I don't know if this is a story about hate, <clears throat> paranoia, insanity, or all three. I think it's all three. You know what scares me? Not Bigfoot Sasquatch. Not so much wraiths, skinwalkers, uh, shapeshifters, and wendigos. It's people. People. People are nuts. People terrify me. So when we hear my son use the word hate, uh, not like, oh, I hate that kind of food or I hate, but if he's talking about hating a person, which he doesn't hate anybody, but if he says, you know, do you, don't you just hate that guy? We always make sure to let him know. What I've found <clears throat> is that it takes as much energy to hate someone as it does to love someone. So why would you give someone you're not fond of the same amount of energy that you give like, like I give my wife, my son and loving them? Why would I give that to somebody I don't like? So I just learned years ago, don't hate. You know, take that energy and give it to those you love. Instead of hating to any degree, just love more, okay? See those people? Psh, leave. Go the other way. Act like you didn't notice them. Now, I'm going to tell you a story about how if you harbor hate, not only can it make you go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, and that's not my problem. I get told that a lot. It can cause you to make false claims to actual police people, the popo, who actually came out and questioned me about this nonsense. I'm getting to it. And you, you will go to your grave, as is the case in this story of the man who went to his grave hating this guy, the guy that loves to play with remote control trucks at almost 50 years old, and here's the, here's the deal. The people you hate, I clearly heard a twig snap as if somebody or something stepped on it and walked on it. Let's keep getting my six. Listen, brah, the people you hate don't even know you hate them. They're out there being happy, joyous, and free, living a good life loving on people you know while you're hating them you're the one with the problem so i'm gonna tell you about this guy um, it, it, there's a, a a random it seems like a random series of events that are not connected to each other as i tell them to you but which it turns out are connected to each other and it's proof that people are crazy people are nuts and hate is a very ugly emotion and this is a damage it does so <clears throat> when i was a freshman in college. This is going back almost 30 freaking years. 29 years, I think, to be exact. So, uh, I worked in a pizza hut. The restaurant, yeah. Uh, the guy that managed the pizza hut, and, and I'm, going to rem I'm going to withhold the names of the guilty here. Uh, he went to my same high school, but he was several years ahead of me, so we weren't actually in high school at the same time. I think he had a younger sister that was in high school when I was, but he was gone a few years before that. So uh, he managed this, this pizza hut in a small town where I was attending a small state college on a track scholarship. And he approached me and he said, hey, you know, while you're here, why don't you come work for me? You have a job. I'm like, okay. So I was going to college, running track, running cross country, working at Pizza Hut. I've always kind of just stayed busy, I guess. Isn't that a beautiful sun back there? should be able to allow us to detect any movement if there is any back in that direction. Like that, yeah, keep getting my six, brah. No, you got your 1080 H, 
D a few days ago, okay? We're doing this one in 360 because this video, it's going to be one of my long-winded stories. It would take a day and a half to upload it. And as you can tell, the sun's already setting. Got to get it on there, okay? So I was working at this Pizza Hut. It was an okay job. Got burnt out on pizza because, you know, if some there were pizzas left over, people would call in for takeout and never come and get them. We got to take them home. Uh, so this one day... Oh, no, I got to tell you this first. So there was all this busy work this guy wanted us to do, this manager. Like, one of them was just simply clean the, the backs of the pans really well. And it was good because it was needed for sanit sanitary purposes. And he was a clean freak, and that was good because it was a restaurant. People ate their food here, right? So I get it. But he would, he would pile this stuff on us, and he would say... Now, if you don't get all this stuff done at the end of, by the end of your shift, you got to come in on Saturday mornings and do it off the clock. He would give us these lists of all this work to do. It's busy work. Well, we would be so busy. I mean, it wasn't a big town, but it was a college town. It was the only place to get pizza. So we're always so busy cooking pizzas. The busy stuff never got done. So I was going in on Saturday mornings at 8 a.m., working about noon, four hours. And I asked him this off the clock nonsense. This doesn't sound legal, you know, and this is back in like 1991 or no, 92, fall 92 is when it started. <sighs> yeah, I really am that old, but it's funny. 70% of you are my age or older. So you're like, shut up, kid. So I asked him about this and he said, he says, well, may it may or may not be potentially it is or not, but here's the deal. You should be able to get all this stuff done during your regular shift. So if you're not getting it done, that means you, you might need to be fired. Maybe you shouldn't be working here. Well, I like the money. You know, I was a college kid. I mean, track. Sure, I was paying my tuition with my leg speed. I was a miler, state champion back in the day. Back when they still had cinder tracks. No, I'm not that old. They had tar tan by then. Um, so I was like, well, okay. Well, I talked to somebody about it who was in the know. Somebody who managed a very large business and who understood the law. Who, because he was a... He was a uh, company man, hated unions. He told me, he said, you know, I hate unions, but this is why they exist. He says, what that guy's doing to you is illegal. You need to turn him in, call the state labor union board or whatever. I'm like, man, but this guy, like we grew up in the same neighborhood. I don't want to do that to him. He said, all right, I get that. He said, but listen, he says, write it down. You write down the dates and the hours that you're going in there and working for free without pay because you never, he said, the guy sounds like an a-hole to me. Turned, he was. He was an a-hole. I mean, who does that, you know? Says you never know when he might try to screw you over. You might want to have this stuff as backup. I was like, well, who? backup. I used to have a chicken named backup. His name's starting QB now, though. He's first string. That's his name, first string. So anyway, I worked there for nine months. And uh, the guy, one of those Saturday mornings, I go into work for free. says, we need to talk. He sets me down. We need to have a talk. He fired me. He fired me, and he said it was because I was stealing food. Here's what happened. This is the honest truth of what happened. Um, a few nights before this, I'd gone back into the stock room to get a box of the little potato chips that they would serve with the sandwiches they made. They made, like, really good Italian subs, some of the best Italian subs I've ever had. And I love Italian subs. That's my favorite sandwich. It was those old... Uh, Pizza Hut Italian subs. I haven't been able to find them in years, but they were just delicious. And they'd serve them with like a, a small snack size bag of uh, Lay's plain potato chips. Well, I'd gone back into the storage room, got a box of potato chips, came out of the storage room. There's a table, like three of my buddies there. They're like, hey, give us some chips. I was like, all right. So I tossed them all a bag of chips, went back behind the line, back in the kitchen. And the manager on duty that night, his name, well, I'm going to withhold the names of the guilty, uh, good guy he's he was a good guy but i don't want to say his name you never know people man and that down old aj might be down and out these days and decide they're gonna slap a lawsuit on me for slandering their character or whatever so i'm not gonna give him that opportunity i don't know where he is and what he's doing but he was a good guy back then he was one of the good ones i hope he still is so um i said hey by the way i just gave three of my buddies out there these little bags of chips should i have should we have one of the waitresses ring me up you know should I pay a buck or two or whatever for this? And the guy's like, no, those things are practically free. Just get back to work. I'm like, okay. So I do. 
Well, about an hour later, he comes back. He goes, give me a dollar. I got to give you a receipt. I'm like, for what? He says, for those chips. And I said, why? He said, there was a guy that saw that happen and he complained about it, said he's like super good friends with the general manager, the D-bag I went to the same high school with. And he said, he's going to call him at home and tell him about it and get you fired. I was like, for that? He goes, yeah, man, this guy hates you. I said, who is this guy? He said, well, I don't want to tell you. I said, was he a professor up to college? Why does he hate me? How, do, how does he even know me? He goes, man, I don't know, but he hates your guts and he's going to make sure you get fired. So here, so I gave him a dollar. He gave me the receipt. So I got fired a few days later because of this. <laughs> Guess what? I called the state labor board union and it wasn't, you know, looking back on it, was it for, not so much it was for revenge, but I, it wasn't revenge. It was, you know what? I'm going to let you push me until I've had enough. And then I'm going to push back. It's like the guy, the annoying neighbor with the crayon. He just came around and came around and came around. And listen, I know his type. I'm convinced that guy wanted me to punch him so he could sue me and get his hayfields back. Take care of it. But I'm not, nope, not going to fall for it. Didn't fall for it. Took care of him with the crayon. So I called the state labor union board, whatever it was. Turn this guy in. I got back pay for all those hours. They did an investigation, find out who he, who else he was making work for free. They had to like guesstimate people's hours. This dude, well, he was no longer with Pizza Hut. Uh, shortly thereafter that, he went to manage another restaurant. Okay, and then he ended up going whatever somewhere different every other year. So that's that's one event. Now, fast forward. Uh, let's see. I got to get these in order or it, it still doesn't make sense to me. The guy, you, you'll find out who it was. that hated me so bad. All right. Fast forward a couple of years. I'm hanging out at my apartment, still a college kid. Uh, the popo show up, please come to question me at my apartment. They're asking me if I threw a cinder block through the window of the local barber shop. I saw that too, so I want to make sure. <clears throat> My arm's actually getting tired from walking around carrying the phone, so I've got it leaned up against a tree to stabilize it, see if we can get that again. Keep watching. So I'm like, did I do what? And they're like, did you throw a cinder block? through the window of the local barbershop. I'm like, heck no. Now, let me explain to you how my physical appearance by this time, this is my last year of college or so. I had long hair, like one length down to my nipples. And uh, why? Because I knew I was about ready to graduate from college. I'd have to go out into the real world and get a real job. And man, did that suck. Didn't last long for me. I do this now. Um, right but i just i can't do that whole real job thing uh so anyway I, I looked like i looked like a derelict okay i was like a derelict um but i told the cops i didn't no no i said yeah i know where the shop is uh, he said oh have you been there i said yeah and this is part of the story i told the guy about the one time i went to that shop that I can remember, but I guess there were two times, but this is the only time I remember. And the cop looked at me, he says, yeah. He says, I believe you, it wasn't you. You're not the one that threw that center block through that window. And I said, thanks, man. He goes, well, don't thank me. He says, I'm just doing my job. He says, I, I know when someone's lying and I know when someone's telling the truth and you're not lying to me, but don't think for a minute I like you. I was like, okay. And then he left. I thought, wow, why would somebody think I threw a center block through the barber's glass well here's the next seemingly unrelated event that is related to all this okay there was like one barber in this little town back then and uh this is when i had my long hair i usually would get my hair like even though it was long i got it trimmed like around the sides the sideburns and up underneath but i usually would do it you know at, at a mall in a larger town when I just go up to, to get somewhere larger, a bigger place, maybe in the weekend. If you're from Appalachia, you understand that. Like where I live now, there's 
everything I need everywhere. So I don't need to like drive an hour and a half away to get to something. Uh, but I needed a trim. Uh, I walked in to this barber shop. There was an old man in there. He was, well, seemed old at the time. He was probably like 50 something, He's close to my age, but I was 21 or 22. That was old back then. Yeah, yeah, I hear you saying it still is. So uh, anyway, I walk in and he says to me, he says, you gonna get all that hair cut off? I said, no. I said, I just like to get it trimmed up on the sides and around the neck. He goes, well, we only cut men's hair in here. We only give men's haircuts. He says, if you want to get all that cut, cut off, you sit down right here in this chair. I'll cut it all off. But you just want it trimmed up. You need to go in the back there where they cut women's hair. Sounded like I heard something jump from one limb to another. Let's change directions. So I look in the back. Turns out in the back, there was a couple women like a salon. It's like they shared this shop. There was this barber guy in the front and these women in the back. I said, well, I don't want to get it cut off yet. I said, I'm going to graduate in about a year and I'm going to have to get it cut off. So I want to look like a derelict for at least another year. So I go back and this woman cuts my hair. She did a great job. And I started actually going back to her uh, after that because she did such a good job and I enjoyed talking to her. All right, here we go. Years after this, Years after I graduated, got out of school, left Appalachistan, came back to the motherland of Virginia and was here and happy. Uh, I was talking to an old college friend and somehow it came up that the barber had died. The barber of the small town had died. And I said, oh, well, that's a shame. I kind of like that guy. And she said, are you serious? And I said, well, yeah. I said, I, I only talked to him once that I can remember. I went in. He seemed like a nice enough guy. He said he didn't, you know, specialize in long hair. That's when I was going through my long hair phase. But he gave me a great recommendation to go back and have my hair cut by these women in the back. And they did a great job. But he seemed like a wonderful guy. He was very helpful. And she said, that guy hated your guts. She knew him somehow. I, I think she went to church with him. I was like, what do you mean he hated my guts? He said, did you never find out that that's a guy that ratted you out to get, get you in all that trouble for those potato chips you gave your buddies? I was like, no way. Why would he get his panties up in a bunch because of that and cause so much stink over it that I would get fired? And she said, well, he, I guess I had been in there for a haircut once before that I didn't remember, maybe my freshman year or whatever. And the guy just determined he didn't like me. It was such a meaningless visit. I don't even remember it. But I guess he sized me up, summed me up. And I, I'll tell you this. You know, I live in a college town here, outside of a college town. There's a lot of locals that hate college students in college towns. M my take on that is, number one, these people are probably just bitter, jaded, filled with hate anyway. They're going to hate somebody regardless. Number two, if you hate college students that much, why do you live in a college town, okay? UVA just celebrated their 200th anniversary a couple years ago. I can assure you the university was in Charlottesville long before you were, brah. So if you hate these kids that much, why don't you leave and go to a non-college town? Oh, no, 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 that, that's right, that's right, because you know what? It's not them, it's you. You're a hateful person. You're a hateful person. Well, guess what? Those college kids, number one, don't know you hate them. Number two, wouldn't care if they did. So this barber, it turns out, went to church with the guy that managed the Pizza Hut. And so he just hated me already because he sized me up sometime before this when he was cutting my hair. Determined he hated me, had it out for me. So he got me fired, okay? The guy, it turns out, my friend told me, thought that that time I went in there to get a haircut during my long hair days, that I was doing it to intimidate him. Now, why would I do that? Listen, this is what I mean by people are crazy and why when you hate someone, you're wasting your time, brah, because they don't even know you hate them. This guy hated me so much, got me fired, was convinced I knew it was him and that I'd walked into his barber shop to intimidate him with my skinny little 145 pound stringy long greasy hair college kid build 
Trust me, I couldn't intimidate anybody back in those days. Okay? So then, and this is not surprising, about a year later, when somebody else throws a cinder block through this D-bag's window, go figure, he's convinced it's me. He just assumes it's me because he got me fired. I'd gone in there to intimidate him. This dude who hated me to death thought I hated him too. I had no idea this dude was hating on me. This story, more than any, just shows why hate is such a useless, useless emotion. This guy could have been spending all that energy on loving somebody in his family, loving his fellow church members, but he was using this to hate me, and I'm probably sure I wasn't the only one he was hating on. He's just a hateful guy. That's what these people do. When your your heart is filled with hate, <laughs> whatever. But listen, that just blew my mind when I found out after this guy died. That's why the popo came to talk to me that day because he contacted him and said that I was the one that did it. But they didn't. He didn't have any proof. He didn't have any evidence. He just in his head was convinced that that guy he hated so much obviously hates him the same and threw the cinder block to the window. Police come out, hear the truth. They say, yeah, and I'm sure they knew the guy. They probably knew he was <whistles> cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. So back, and this is why I tell my son, it's energy you should be giving people you love. And again, and I think somebody, one of our viewers here left this as a comment in the comment section. The people that you hate don't even know you hate them, dude. Listen, brah, you're sitting over there hating somebody, hate their guts. It drives you madly insane. You become insanely jealous when good things happen to them in their life. Uh, they don't even know you hate them. So just stop. Listen, when your heart is filled with love, you'll find that life is too short to hate anyone or anything. But when your heart is filled with hate, you'll, you'll find out that life is too long to sit around wallowing in such misery. So just stop. See you for more next time from here at Homesteading Off the Grid and whatever the hell this channel's about.